the aquatic spider. Um, you'll have to excuse me for calling this spider a fly. <laughs> because really we're fly fishermen and I'm talking about tying a fly. But this is the aquatic spider. Uh, it's um, a very useful pattern which deserves to be better known. It's a fly you don't see very often. But take it from me, it's a real killer. Not to be confused, when I talk about a spider, not to be confused with North Country soft hackle wet flies, which are also called spiders, but that relates more to the way they're tied. Um, the best known of those North Country spiders are the snipe and purple, or one which is used in our area quite a bit, the black and peacock spider. But this is actually an imitation of uh, an arachnid. Now, it's, um, it's, a, it's a very good fly, and I'm going to... You can tie it on a size 12 or, or a size 10. I'm going to tie it on a 10, but these, which I've taken out of my box, are all on a size 12. I'm going to tie it on a 10 because I think it'll come out better on the... Um, on the on the video uh, usually fished a uh, dry fly method cast upstream and allowed to float back it can be deadly or when a wash in the surface film or even just under the surface it is um, very good it's it's especially good on a flat calm surface if it's gently twitched back and um, just get my light a bit better here. If it's gently twitched back to um, give the impression of movement. Uh, so that's that's it. Now there is one difficulty in tying this fly. The legs are peacock curl, but they're peacock sword. And to get the peacock sword small enough is a little bit of a problem. But uh, don't despair because the legs can be trimmed and the fly comes out just as good. Okay, I'm going to do it now. I, I'm going to start it off. Now, I've waxed the silk. I'm going to use a black silk. So, just bear with me while I get things sorted out here. Now, the first thing I do is I put in a hackle stalk because, as you can see, they're tied sort of parachute style. Um, the legs are hackled and this is where we how we do it now um, with a parachute fly a parachute hackle we need a post and we um, to get a post you can use a gallows tool and I want to point out that the stalk which I'm going to tie in in a moment is about a third of the way up the body on this fly don't know if that was pointed out okay, but there's about a third there. So that's where I'm going to put the post. Before I do, I'm going to give a bit of a foundation of silk. And I just go sort of halfway down, well, sort of in line with the tip of the hook, which is just hidden in the vise there. And I'm going to come back up, ready to tie in the post. I'm really giving a bit of a foundation. I've got to concentrate on this post because it's um, <coughs> it's got to be pretty robust. Now, the post, I'm going to use a hackle stalk. Now, th this doesn't give any weight, and this is a hackle, a large hackle, and what I'm going to do is I strip all the fibres off it like this. I wouldn't strip this feather specifically to tie this fly, but I would be using these for hackles, beard hackles, on salmon or sea trout flies. But I'm just showing you, I'll be left with this stalk, one which I've already stripped when I was tying larger flies. So I tie this on now, and this is what I do. I just go across like this, a figure of eight, that way, this way, that way again, this way again, I give it two, and then I turn it upside down, like this, 
and I, I've got to really secure this now and to enable me to tie around the top I'll just nip that one off so I got two about the same size and I'm now going to tie this pretty robustly I'll be building this up a bit because the stalk on the peacock sword is quite a, a thickish stalk and there'll be a bit of pressure on it so I'm tying this pretty solid here now I'm going to go around a few times to get this solid now there's no weight in this stalk it's a thick stalk and we've all heard the expression as light as a feather well this is a feather that's been stripped so it's even lighter and the stalk doesn't hold water um, although the fly may drop into the surface film it's we still need this good stalk like this now that I've tied that in I'm going to take the silk down to the bend to do the rest of, tie the rest of the fly and I'm just going to put a blob of varnish at the base of that stalk so that it dries and it'll stiffen it all up while um, I'm tying the rest of the fly. Just a touch of varnish like that. That'll go sort of solid <coughs> while the fly, the rest of the fly is being tied. Now it's called an aquatic spider and these spiders they they an aquatic spider dives under the water it's got its web at the edge of the the river or the stream still water or whatever and it dives in and it catches all sorts of even little fish i'm i'm told and it's got an air bubble on the back now there are different tie-ins for this um and Aquatic spider or not an aquatic spider, trout go for it. But I, so I, uh, it could be an ordinary house spider, whatever you like. The trout love a spider. Now I'm going to put on a silver tag here, which could imitate an air bubble. I'm not sure if it does, and it doesn't really matter. But that's what I'm going to put on. So I just tied that in. I'm going to put a touch of varnish to help this silver stick. Put my silk at the front for now and give me a little bit more room. And this is my tag going on, which may or may not imitate an air bubble, but it certainly adds a teeny bit of attraction to the fly. Okay, that's there. Take myself back. Ready to tie off. So I'm going to call that my air bubble. Okay, now the body, the, the there's an underbody and an overbody. The overbody is peacock hurl. And there's quite a fat body on this fly. So I've got about six strands of peacock hurl here. And I'm going to tie them in by the thin end. But the thin end, the tip, is always a bit brittle so I, I cut those off and I'm just going to tie them in like this there is one problem with this fly I've been told is that um, when a fish takes it it um, they don't always hook the fish this is why I like to leave the hook quite well exposed, like this one. So there's plenty of hook there for the fish 
to take. I don't want to mask the hook. Right, now the underbody, I'm going to use foam. Got a sheet of foam like this, and I'm going to cut some off it. Just bear with me a little. Go to my bench because I don't want to it to drop on the floor. But I will show you what I'm doing. I'm cutting a strip off like this. Okay, bear with me. And it's it's a sort of taper on it to make it easier to tie in. Now this foam, although it'll help the fly to float, it cannot be relied on and the fly will still need some floatant on it. Put that at the front. See a little piece of hurl, not that it matters. Okay, I'm going to wind this foam on. <coughs> there are various ways of putting foam on. Some people, some of my friends, use super glue and put it over the top. Um, but I like to do it this way, and I'll show you. And you can you can decide how you want to do it. Right, I'm going to wind it. If you do this fly, don't pull too hard in the beginning because you may snap the foam. Now you're there. We go past the hackle stalk like this. Up to about there. Where I'm now going to secure the foam. Cut off the surplus. Foam is, is starting to become very popular in flies. It certainly helps the fly to float. Right. Next I'm going to wind the peacock curl. So again, I touch with varnish. We got my six strands. I draw them like this to get them all lined up and I just wind carefully. Keep drawing them so you don't get a loose one. Keep drawing. See I've passed the post. Coming up to the eye of the hook or the head of the fly ready to tie off. So this is what we've got at the moment. I'll just remove the surplus. I'm not a mad keen guy for exact imitation of any fly because you can tie a fly which exactly imitate something but is dull and lifeless in the water but this is a sort of a exact imitation not far off okay now all that's left is the hackle which forms the legs like this and we use peacock hurl but we use the sword feather and um, you can see the smaller ones at the top and the bigger ones down the bottom. Now, with the sword, I'm going to put some biggish ones on because I'm going to show you, you, you may not be able to get um, small ones. They're not easy to obtain. I'm stripping this off a bit, makes the stalk a bit thinner, and this is going to be the legs. Now I take my silk back, I wind it over the hurl, which is okay because it ribs it, it doesn't do any da damage. And one of the reasons I'm putting on this large um, hackle or feather is because I want to show you to, how to trim it later. I know it's a bit too big. I just tie it on the side like this. 
tie it down. I'm going to get that stalk out of the way. And I'm leaving my silk hanging there and I gave a few winds. generally about two. I get my little brush here ready this is how they go like this Spider has eight legs, but I'm going to give this a few more because we can always cut them off. Right, I'm going to secure this stalk, which holds everything down. Just like that. While it's like that, I use the hackle pliers to keep the weight of the stalk down and I wind the silk around like this just bear with me and don't worry too much about the position of the legs at the moment because we'll Nip them off if we got too many and we'll position them. Okay, that's the piece of hackle out of the way. Now I've got to finish off. So what I do now is I tie here to make a whip finish while we're there. And I put on a little bit of peacock curl just in case I've got some windings to hide. Like that. I'm going to come back to these legs. Slipped a bit there, so I'll tie it a bit tighter. A little bit fiddly, but I'm sure you'll get the idea of what I'm trying to do. Just a couple of winds like this. And I'm going to put the whip finish on before I adjust those legs. Three winds and I draw up. remove the silk. I'm going to put some varnish on those whippings while the head is exposed. Just like that. Doesn't look much of a fly at the moment or much of a spider, whatever you want to call it. I know the eye is cleared now, and now I come back to the legs. And I often knock a couple of these off because I gave a few winds, and um, I'd rather have too many. It's easy for me to take some off rather than put some on. Well, it's impossible to get them on, I think, afterwards. So this is what we're doing.
Okay, now I start to look at them. There's one there that I'll remove. That one's sticking up a bit. A two or three uh, few there. So I'll remove one or two of these. Okay, we're starting to get the shape of the fly. Or the spider, I should say. Now we're at that stage, I knock off this. Now I'm going to show you this. Can you see how it is at the moment? Can you imagine a trout looking up underneath at that? That's the type of thing. Now, I said to you earlier, I deliberately put on long legs. That's partly true, but it is difficult. Now, I'm going to put some varnish around this post because this helps to keep the hackle in position. And I put a few now on the legs. Just at the root of these legs, I just wipe them a bit. When it dries, they'll stay in that position. We've almost got the fly done now, but the legs are too long, maybe. Spiders have long legs, but if you look carefully at this peacock curl, there are like little joints in it. And I'm going to now nip these off at the joints. I've done this for years. It doesn't affect the fly. Normally, you don't like to trim a hackle. Now there we are. We're somewhere near. As I said before, this is a fly which deserves to be better known. Two legs sticking together there. Doesn't matter. The true spider has eight legs. I don't know how many is on that one. But it works. If you lose one or two legs while you're fishing it, it doesn't matter. Can you visualize a trout looking at that from underneath? They like it, they take it. And I can assure you, it is a very, very good fly to use. And I will say this, still water flies are in a different category. But it's true that any fly which kills on a river will kill on a still water, not necessarily the other way around. This will kill on both. And I wanted to show you that fly. It's a little bit difficult to tie, but um, I, I, I want to sort of share my passion with you as it was shared with me. Uh, persevere with this fly and I think you will be rewarded. Thank you for watching.